Good morning. Welcome to Bible study. My name is Carolyn Hayes. I'm the director of children and young families at Gaithersburg Presbyterian Church. And as I said, welcome to Bible study. Today, we are going to start um, First Chronicles. And uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll pray and then we'll just get started. Gracious and loving Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for time spent studying your word. Please open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, and open our eyes to you and to your word. Please help us see how things that happened and people who lived so long ago in many ways are so current, it's almost frightening. Please help us learn how to apply these lessons to our lives. Please help us see you at work in our world each and every day. Please help us to see you, at, you in the people in our lives and help us to act like we do both of those things. Please bless this study and us to thy service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, First Chronicles, huh? Um, we're going to start this very differently, and I think it, it's probably going to take the whole time, but uh, I I need to kind of reset things because I'm the way these lay out in in the scripture it is very confusing to me, and I need a little framework. Okay. So um, the word, the Hebrew word for the book of, that we call Chronicles, is actually closer to the events or annals of the days or years. The Septuagint translators, the people who translated the um, Hebrew Bible into Greek, translated it into a book called Things Omitted. They apparently thought of it as a supplement to uh, Samuel and Kings. Jerome, who lived in 347, who lived from 347 to 420 AD um, and translated the Septuagint into Latin, or they, um, at any rate, suggested that it should be called Chronicle of the Whole Sacred Story. And when Luther wrote, when Luther translated it in, into the famous German Bible, that's how he translated it. And it's been Chronicles ever since. Um, according to Jewish tradition, um, this was written probably by Ezra, although the jury's still out on that. Um, who, uh, he's uh, a prophet. And, a uh, priest and a scribe and a prophet who will that his book comes right after Chronicles. Um, about half of it appears to have been taken from Samuel and Kings, um, but also drew on the Pentateuch, the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and I always forget one of them. Um, also, Judges, Ruth, Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Zechariah. See, this is where it starts to get confusing because we're we're in Chronicles, but we're actually jumping ahead where the books lay. So that's where I start getting all goofed up. Um, and the author also seems to refer to sources that we don't have, um, but he didn't invent. He did, he or they, did select, arrange, and integrate to tell a particular story, a sermon um, is the way my, uh, the forward to my, in my Bible, two Chronicles refers to it, to the people of Israel after the exile, as they tried to remember who they, they were. Um, the authors of King, of Samuel and Kings were writing to the Hebrew people in exile. And so they organized and interpreted the stories in that in, in a way that was particular to their need. So when Ezra was writing to the Jewish people who had been those who came home, 
not that many people did to begin with. Um, they were trying to reconstruct who they were and how events unfolded as they did, all the while trying to figure out whether whether God was even, as again, the foreword says, whether God was still interested in them. Um, in the Jewish texts, Chronicles comes last because it summarizes all of the other books. Um, the Hebrew people have been allowed to return and it, it is framed around the prophetic hope that the, um, the temple would be rebuilt, a messianic king from the Davidic line would come back, um, and the Hebrew people would fulfill what God had intended so many years before. Um, at the beginning of Chronicles, you go through a whole lot of what appeared to be very, very boring and it's, it's interesting in that you were able to pick out certain names. Um, and I don't think that's just me picking them out. I think they, they did that on purpose because they want, they, they're trying to particularly highlight two key lineages, the lineages of, from the kingdom of Judah that go back to David and on back. Oddly enough, they started off in uh, Israel, the Northern Kingdom, but that was before they separated. Um, and the, the priesthood or the descendants of Aaron, as well as the Levites. Um, first, first Chronicles focuses on David and writes, writes a story that's different from what we are accustomed to. Um, and as I said, it focuses on Judah and the line of David. Um, and Second Chronicles, I'm sorry, First Chronicles focuses on David and, and kind of re, retells the story. And Second Chronicles focuses on Judah, the line of David, post-David. Um, and this is about the time where I was doing this kind of because I wanted to understand why we were reading this again. Um, and then I got, I started getting confused in terms of my timeline. So I went back and found a timeline that I kind of summarized because there was a lot more detail than I wanted. But, and, and if you want this, email me at chayes at gpchurch.org and I will send it to you because it, it really is helping me keep everything sequential. Um, I'm just that kind of girl. So let's, let's do a quick timeline. God created the world according to the Bible. We're not doing Big Bang or carbon dating or any of that stuff. According to the Bible, about 4,000 BC, and these are all abouts. Um, Methuselah lived about, or Noah lived about 4,000, well, clearly, about 4,000 BC to about 3,070 BC. Methuselah of great age fame lived from about 330, 50 BC to about 230, 2,000. 350 BC. Noah, and it's nice to have these names and to kind of have a timeline on these guys. Noah, 2950 to 2000 BC, the flood at about 2350 BC. Tower of Babel, about 2250 BC, and just kind of because the this timeline calls Egypt being founded at 2007, 2170 BC. Abraham, or Abram, because he starts off being Abram, uh, 2165 BC 
to 1990 BC. People aren't living nearly as long, although they still still live a good long time. Um, Abram goes to Canaan at about 2090 BC. Um, Sod, just to give you a, a an anchor, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed at about 2065 BC. Isaac was born 2065, and he lived until about 1885 BC. Jacob lived about 20, 2000, from 2050 BC to about 1855 BC. And Joseph from about 1910 BC to about 1800. He was sold into slavery in about 1895 BC. Jacob and his sons moved to Egypt in about 1870 BC. And um, they were in Egypt until about 1450. Moses, um, born about 1530 BC. The Exodus took place about 1450, and they were they Moses died at about 1410 BC. Joshua ruled from 1410 to 1390. That was when they went into Canaan. The conquest of Canaan was complete in about 1400. And then we went into that period of judges. Saul, that charming, charming fellow, reigned from about 1095, call it 1100 uh, BC to about 1015. David, from about 1015 BC to about 970 and Solomon from 970 to 930. That's when the kingdoms split. And this is where this is where I start getting really goofed up. So the kingdoms split 19, at 930 BC. The northern kingdom, those really terrible, terrible, terrible kings up there in the northern kingdom, lasts from 930 BC to 725. They fell pretty quickly. Judah, the southern kingdom where um, Jerusalem is, lasted from 930 to about 590 BC. The um, Assyrians slash Babylonians come and conquer both of them. They get taken into exile. They are in exile for about 70 years, almost exactly 70 years. Um, or that's when the temple starts being rebuilt. The, so the Jews start returning from exiles. King Cyrus says, you can go home. But only a small number of them start returning. Um, they return in about 536 BC. The temple starts being rebuilt in 530. I'm going to go back to the Jews coming back. The first move back was led by a guy named Zerubbabel, who was from the house of David. When they got there, Jerusalem was in ruins um, with Samaritans. I am a Samaritans. Samaritans living in Jerusalem. And they were kind of semi-Jews. Remember, the, um, the Jewish priests came down to teach him how to... Um, worship the Lord so, so the Lord would stop sending lions to carry off the settlers. Um, and they began building, uh, rebuilding the temple. More Jews came back um, over as the years progressed. Uh, more Jews came back with Ezra, who was a priest and a scribe and a prophet. Um, Nehemiah, who we also have the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah um, got permission to start rebuilding the walls. And we start, we start to see um, the people returning and Jerusalem being rebuilt and the temple being rebuilt. That goes back to that, the two main 
themes. They, the prophets, um, the prophetic hope is that the temple will be rebuilt. Um, because with the temple being rebuilt and the, the descendants of Aaron being the priests and the Levites taking care of the temple, those are some of the things that they were able to save. They were able to find again in the wreckage or had saved um, or had been saved by um, Hezekiah. Hezekiah. I think it's Hezekiah. Um, And by rebuilding the temple, they are going to, that will help them remember who they are. God will come, you remember God, God lives in the temple. God's spirit will come and live in the temple. God will be their God and they will be God's people, but they have forgotten how to do that. The other piece of that, of the prophetic hope is that a messianic king from the line of David will come and lead them to freedom and right living. Um, as I said, this for me, and maybe for you too, this is this jumping back and forth in, in time sequences. And, you know, you're focusing, sometimes you'll focus on one character and sometimes you'll focus on another, but okay, what happened to this guy? Um, I, I find this very confusing, which is why I really wanted to start with this. Um, the first nine chapters of um, Chronicles really are the uh, genealogies of pretty much all of the 12 tribes. And it's it seems to me there are some other folks in there that I don't quite understand how they fit. Um, but I'm We'll work on it together, um, and then we start. We start with the the David story, um, and as I said, we we can expect to learn some more about David because what he's trying to do is what the author or authors are trying to do is to create a picture of a perfect messianic king. What, how do they act? What do they do? And so we, we hear stories that we didn't hear um, previously. We will hear nothing about um, any of David's weaknesses. And, you know, he had some. Um, and we won't hear about those. <laughs> we're just going to hear about what a great guy he is. And this is, this, is, this is the kind of king that we're looking for. This is, the, this is the kind of king and the kind of person that we should all emulate. Um, and I am going to suggest that if you don't want me to send you the timeline, look one up for yourself, just for your own sanity, because it does, it gets very confusing, particularly because, you know, you've got the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom that were conquered at different times. Some of the people from the Northern Kingdom, the, the religious people from the Northern Kingdom came down to the southern kingdom and evidently a lot of them stayed um but then they were still overrun um and uh cartered off to someplace in babylon um so that that is where i'm going to leave it because i don't really want i want to do david complete or at least you know a big chunk of david um when we start the next session um and we'll we'll probably take two sessions to do um the rest of, of first chronicles and then two maybe three to do um second chronicles so um i hope you are i hope you had a great week i hope you have a great week coming up i hope you and your families are staying well and staying safe um i hope you're taking good care of each other i hope that you were able to get out or will be able to get out, depending on when you're watching this, um, to help your community somehow on Monday to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. Um, and in the meantime, 
stay in your bubble, wear your mask, and um, I look forward to seeing you hopefully sometime pretty soon. Take care.